Welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can link a domain name from Namecheap.com to a server that's running on the DigitalOcean platform. So what we're actually going to be doing is creating a brand new server uh, through uh, DigitalOcean. They call them Droplet. And we're going to be uh, actually purchasing a domain name from Namecheap.com and then linking the two together so that when you actually visit the uh, domain name in your address bar of your browser, you will actually see some content uh, that's been hosted onto the uh, actual server. But there's another reason for doing this, which I'll explain at the end of the tutorial, but you could do anything with it. And it's probably important to say at this point as well uh, that you don't actually have to use these two uh, services, uh, Namecheap and DigitalOcean. This will work for any uh, domain name registrar and also any hosting provider, but you can get the idea of the process of what you need to do. Uh, and I'm going to go through everything that we need in this tutorial. So if you've got no idea what I'm talking about at the moment, uh, a domain name is basically an address or part of an address that you would visit in a web browser to actually pull up a site. So here you might say mywebsite.com and we're going to link that to an IP address, which is the actual machine address of a computer. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be anything uh, fancy or specific, um, but some server that's running within a cloud infrastructure. And as mentioned, this will be DigitalOcean in our case, but it could be AWS, it could be uh, just a random shared hosting platform as well, if they allow you to do this kind of thing. So what we should have by the end of this tutorial is a brand new domain name on the internet. I'm actually setting one up for my business and uh, we should point that uh, to the DigitalOcean server. Uh, and when you actually visit it, you should see some content. Uh, but you'll see more a bit about how that works in just a second. So uh, what we'll need to do first of all is actually get the uh, domain name set up. So we're going to go over to uh, DigitalOcean first off before we actually register the domain. And uh, if you haven't got a DigitalOcean account already, uh, you can go and get a free account and I'll provide a link below. Uh, and if you register via that link, I think you get like $100 free credit or something like that. Uh, that's not the reason why I'm doing this video. Uh, feel free to just sign up for your own account if you want, but you will get some free credit if you use that link below. Uh, so I'm going to take you through creating a droplet or a server in DigitalOcean first of all. So let's go ahead, uh, once you've logged in and created your account, obviously, let's go ahead to create. I uh, should try and make this a bit bigger for you guys so you can see. And then we'll create a, a droplet, which is basically a computer that we saw in the image below uh, before, uh, which will be the, the server that will actually serve our content. So uh, we've got a few different options when we're creating our droplets, and uh, most of them shouldn't matter too much for you. Uh, but I'm going to choose the uh, region of London simply because it's closest to me. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference uh, for our purposes. Uh, oh, there you go. There is a tip saying select the closest data center to you. So there you go. That's uh, that's the best best advice. And then we need to work out what software we're going to actually be running on this uh, server. So you can you just use some standard uh, open source uh, uh, operating systems like Ubuntu and, and uh, uh, Debian CentOS and so forth like that. Uh, but you can actually, uh, if we go to this marketplace here, uh, we can actually get software pre-installed on the server for us to start off with. So if you wanted to run a WordPress site, for example, you can choose the WordPress option and it'll install all the dependencies. So you've got PHP, MySQL, etc., and do that for you. Uh, if you want a simple web server, uh, you can go for uh, Nginx, for example, uh, which is something I've used uh, quite a lot before. Uh, but for today's tutorial, I'm actually going to install Docker um, just because it'll do uh, a lot of the setup for me and I don't have to go onto the server to actually uh, set this up for us. Uh, and that gives you flexibility actually because it means that you can uh, install any software you like through Docker and uh, I'm actually not going to be installing a web hosting uh, software on this, uh, this image uh, in the long run. So that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, but feel free to have a look at the different uh, apps that you can install and, and choose whatever you need from there. And uh, you might notice as well, it's going to charge us $56 a month at the moment, which is uh, quite a lot. Uh, but we can reduce that down. Um, I'm just going to go for a regular SSD uh, as the hard drive. And let's just whack it all the way down to $6 a month, which is still pretty generous. You still get one gigabyte of RAM, loads of disk space and so forth like that. And for what I'm going to be doing, that is absolutely fine. And if you do want to carry on with this server in the future, you can just come back and upgrade it later on. So there we go for the $6 a month uh, package there. So uh, the last thing that we need to do uh, is uh, how you're actually going to log on to this server to make changes and do stuff. So you've got two options, either password or SSH key. 
obviously password really uh, not the best idea uh, we want to have maximum security on here so I'm going to go with the SSH key and in my digital ocean uh, accounts I've got loads of different SSH keys from different uh, uh, computers from the past so uh, the one I'm using at the moment is this M1 Max SSH key so I want to make sure that that's selected so I can log on to the server uh, the droplet in just a moment um, if you don't if you're confused by SSH keys or don't know what they are or don't know how to use them there is a video on the channel which I'll put a link in the description below uh, which will explain it all and it will show you how to generate an SSH key and of course you've got the option to add new keys here as well so that's all we need um, there's actually another section down here um, for tags so I'm just gonna give this a tag of uh, JB uh, digital media uh, oops JB digital media because uh, that is the uh, going to be representative of the company that I'm going to set this up for, so uh, which will link to the domain name as well. But it's just something to identify it within DigitalOcean, and then we'll click Create Droplet. And depending on how busy the uh, infrastructure is, this might take a minute or two. Uh, looks like it's going through reasonably quickly. Uh, but essentially, what it's going uh, ahead and doing here for us is uh, we're actually going. Um, it's creating a new. Uh, server within the DigitalOcean platform uh, and what that will give us back is the IP address uh, which will identify on the internet uh, which we saw in the diagram a moment ago is what you can use to actually find uh, that particular server uh, on the internet and that's what we're going to link our domain name to. Uh, so it's still taking another minute or so. Um, uh, I'll just pause the video for a second because this might take a few minutes and then I'll come back when this has finished. Okay, so when that has finished, you should see something like this in your Digital Ocean account. Uh, and you can see here we've got the, the droplet set up. And as I mentioned, it's, we've got that IP address uh, which will allow us to access uh, this particular server on the internet. So we've installed Docker, um, but there's nothing actually running on it at the moment. So for example, if I go to this uh, IP address in my address bar, nothing's going to happen. There's no software running. Uh, there's no web server to actually respond to this request, uh, so it'll just sit there and probably time out after a while. Uh, so what we can do now, uh, we've got the server running, but it's going to be a bit useless if we just buy a domain and link, link to it now. Uh, so we could actually log on to that server and just set up uh, Nginx running within our Docker uh, environment, uh, just so we've got something to see. And I can prove to you that this is actually a, a real um, a server that it could be accessed on the, uh, the net. So to do that, uh, we're just going to go over to uh, a Terminal. Uh, so on, our, on my Mac here, so I'm going to just SSH onto this terminal. So we'll say root at and then the IP address that I just copied a moment ago. And if it's set up, yeah, we should get this message. So we're just saying yes, we want to uh, verify the identity. Uh, and now we're actually logged onto the droplet itself, and I can execute commands on here, uh, much as I would do in my uh, in a normal way on, on my computer. So uh, there's a couple of things that I want to do. Uh, we've got Docker up and running, uh, hopefully. Uh, so let's have a look. Yep, so Docker's running, so we can run Docker commands. Let me just clear that down so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to run a Docker command to actually run Nginx on this uh, server now. So we're going to say Docker run name, um, just say test Nginx, and just set up the ports for this. So uh, by default, web traffic oops, is served on port uh, 80. And there we go. Uh, and then just we want the image we want to run is Nginx. And it'll complain saying it can't find Nginx locally, but then Docker will go and pull the Nginx uh, image uh, and actually set that running for us. So it just gives that a second to update. It's nice and fast. Uh, we should find now um, if we list Docker uh, containers that are running, you can see that Nginx is running uh, for that test Nginx. Uh, name that we just created a second ago. So uh, one more thing just before we uh, check this out and just want to make sure that the uh, firewall uh, is allowing traffic on port 80 uh, because I think by default it's not on this image. Uh, but what ha should happen now if we go over to this IP address uh, that we've got here and refresh the page you can see uh, we're getting a message from Nginx saying uh, welcome to Nginx. So we can see now that that Docker container is serving uh, the web server uh, and uh, it is obviously able to accept traffic as well. So that's just a little test. I'm not going to leave this running, but just to give you an example of how you could if you're using Docker in this image or if you'd set up Nginx uh, yourself, uh, how you could actually get a website 
uh, served um, on this IP. So now it's on to the actual, uh, I'll say fun part, but the, uh, the more kind of interesting part because you can actually choose uh, what name you're going to associate with this service that we've just created. Uh, so we're going to go over to a, dem a domain registrar. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Namecheap. Uh, where we can purchase a domain and then we're going to be able to link it to the server that we've just set up. So again, just to reiterate, you don't have to use Namecheap. I find them pretty good. Prices are quite reasonable, service is good, etc. Uh, but if you've got a preferred uh, registrar uh, that you'd like to use, then uh, feel free to do that. And the process should be fairly similar and I'll point out the, the things you should be looking for if you've got a different registrar. Okay, so uh, we could just go, uh, I think I'll just show you what it looks like uh, from a kind of new customer uh, perspective here. Um, so yeah, we can search for a new domain uh, with Namecheap. Uh, so the domain I'm interested in getting is uh, JB uh, Digital uh, Media, and uh, we'll go .com. I'm pretty sure it should be available. I should have checked that before I started the video, really. Let's just wait for it to do its thing. It's just checking to see if that domain is actually available or not. <laughs> it's actually not. So that's absolutely typical. I should have really checked this beforehand. Um, okay, so uh, let's have a look and see if we can find a different extension. Uh, I don't really want to spend loads and loads of cash on uh, the domain itself. Um, I am going to be using it, but I just, uh, for the purposes of the tutorial, Let's see if we can find something here. So what's reasonable? Um, we've got .net maybe, that's okay, network. Um, okay, uh, jbdigitalmedia.link would be good. And that actually fits in with what I'm thinking of doing with this domain. Uh, so let me uh, let me go for that one. So um, when uh, you buy any domain name from any provider, they're gonna sell, try and sell you loads of stuff, but we don't really need anything uh, other than the domain itself in this example. So uh, let's go to the checkout here. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the domain registration and uh, one thing I do like about Namecheap is they include the uh, domain privacy uh, for free. Uh, free forever, that's always good. So um, I'm gonna stick with that. I might just register this for a couple of years while it's at that price. Um, just so it doesn't run out and like I said there's loads of other things that you can install as well but you don't you, uh, things that you can buy uh, but you don't really need anything if you're just literally taking the domain and linking it somewhere else uh, so I'm going to stick with that uh, so I'm just going to go through the checkout process so uh, again I'll pause the video because obviously you don't need to see my bank details and so forth like that so we're back in one second Okay, so the payment's completed and I've got that domain name secured. And if we go back to the uh, Namecheap account and then uh, go into the list of domains, uh, you can see that uh, jbdigitalmedia.link uh, 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 domain is, is there now uh, and it's active and ready to use. So now we're in the, we've got the domain available, uh, but we need to actually now make that link between the domain itself and the server that we just created on DigitalOcean. So in order to do that, uh, we use something called DNS. Uh, so it's the domain name system, uh, which we're going to use to tell anyone searching for this domain, or, or rather entering the name into their address bar of their browser, uh, where uh, traffic should be sent. So uh, by default, uh, it'll have the uh, name cheap stuff set up uh, for us, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those um, uh, because we don't need those anymore. And if you're using another provider, that's what you want to be looking for in your control panel or your account is the, the DNS section for your domain. Uh, because what we're going to do now is, is set up some records to actually point the domain that we just purchased uh, to DigitalOcean. So let's create add a new record here. And we're going to create a new A record. And this is first one is going to be uh, the prefix that comes before the domain name. So for example, if anyone types in www.jbdigitalmedia.link, uh, we're going to point them to this IP address. So hopefully it should be pretty obvious what the IP address is. It's just the one that we got uh, from our digital ocean uh, droplet when it was set up. Uh, so it's this 144 number here. So let's take that and then pop it into this value uh, box here and just click save. So that will handle anyone typing in www.thedomain, but also uh, most people don't actually do that anymore. It's kind of a bit of a, a legacy thing. 
we want to actually catch anyone that's just typing in the domain itself. So uh, you don't think you can do this in Namecheap by just leaving it blank, I could be wrong. Yeah, it'll give you an error saying that you can't just leave it blank, so you've got to provide a, a value. So what you do with Namecheap is just put in an at symbol, and that will basically catch anything, including the blank record, uh, and send people to this address as well. So this might depend on your domain provider, but with Namecheap, you just need these two records, and once you've got them set up, you should find that uh, the domain is now pointing to this IP. Now, depending if you've registered the domain a while ago or if you've done anything with the domain before, you might run into a problem uh, with DNS caching. Uh, so some of these changes can take up to 24 hours. So uh, if you don't see the result instantly when you're browsing to the new domain name, uh, that might be the reason why uh, you're seeing that. Uh, so uh, just give it that 24 hours once you've made the change. So we've done that, uh, what we should be able to do now uh, is just go to this domain name uh, in our address bar of our browser and fingers crossed it should be, let's open it in a new tab here, it should be pointing directly uh, to our DigitalOcean server, uh, which when it loads, you can see uh, we're seeing the same Nginx page uh, that we were seeing uh, from our Docker container uh, when we were just browsing to the IP address a moment ago. So that's pretty much it. There's a lot more to do uh, with the domain name itself. Uh, if we were going to be running a web page on Nginx like this, you'd want to make sure it's secure and obviously upload some files uh, rather than just having the default Nginx page. But that's the basic principle. Go in and create your uh, server with your server provider, DigitalOcean in our case. Uh, create the droplet, get the IP address, and then once you've got your domain name registered with whomever you're registering it with, you can just supply them with that IP address to actually link the domain directly to the server as well. So uh, that leads me on to the next thing of what I'm actually going to be doing with this droplet and this domain name. So uh, what I've got a few projects on the go that I want to have uh, analytics for and I didn't want to use Google Analytics because then you have to start getting to the whole uh, cookies thing to say like why, you've, why you're storing a cookie for Google Analytics and so forth like that. Uh, so there's actually an open source uh, alternative to Google Analytics called Plausible and it's a little lot more lightweight it doesn't uh, require lots of uh, cookie uh, information to be stored so what I'm actually going to be doing on this domain name is actually installing Plausible Analytics uh, and then actually using it on this new domain name that I've registered so then I can actually include it on other sites uh, so I can actually just uh, have my analytics running and stored all in one place and just have multiple sites uh, and, and, and just visit the one control panel to see them. So if you're interested to see how you can set up plausible analytics, then check out the next video uh, where we'll be doing just that. And we'll be using Docker to actually grab a copy of the plausible analytics software uh, and get that up and running. But that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.